Welcome to my coverage of the 2023 Spiel des Jahres nominees. These are the game of the year games right here. I've got all three of them. I'm going to show you very briefly what they're doing, what kind of gameplay they offer, and then you betcha, I'm going to rank them. I'm going to tell you what I think is my favorite game of the games nominated, and if it's different from the game I think will win, I'll tell you what I think that game is as well. So first off, we've got Dorf Romantic, the board game. Uh, this was designed by Michael Palm and Lucas Zack, and it's uh, distributed by Pegasus Spiel, and it says it is an idyllic tile laying game for two to six people. Yeah, all of these are for eight and older as well, which I think fits the game of the year parameters incredibly well. The next thing is Fun Facts by Casper Lapp. This is uh, published by Repos Productions, um, and it is an enlightening self-assessment for four to eight players. And then lastly, Next Station London. This is designed by Matthew Dunstan, uh, distributed by HCM Kinzel and Blue Orange, and this is described as a uh, colorful on the move in London's underground for one to four players. This is a flip and write. So with those brief descriptions, I'm going to pull out some of the components and just give you a feel for the game because I think that's really important when you're trying to assess, is this game for me? And is this going to be the game of the year winner? So let's take a look at this first one. Next Station London, flip and write game of sketching subway lines. The first thing you're going to see is you've got four colored pencils and it's very important that you have these colored pencils and that you keep them sharp because everybody is going to be using all of these pencils um, throughout the entire game. That's why it only goes to four players. So I've got one of these sheets here ready to show you, but I also wanted to actually show you this is the stack. This is the game uh, essentially because it's just got front and back. Um, a board. Everyone's going to get one of these sheets. You tear one off, give it to someone. They can use it two times before it's been spent. A lot of sheets in there for you to use. And then there are these cards. So these are going to be the subway cards that tell you where to go. You're going to shuffle those up and you are going to, at the very beginning of the round or the game in this case, you'll take one of the colored pencils. Everyone at the table will take a different one. That's going to be the subway line that you draw onto your um, sheet of paper. So this is your subway line. You've got essentially nine districts and you have all these different dotted lines and all these different subway stations. There's a nice river that runs through it. There's a couple of these central hubs and a uh, hot spots for tourists and things like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to flip over that very first card and it's going to show a symbol. And that's going to be the symbol that you draw to everybody at the same time onto their subway line starting at their beginning location. So because I am purple, I'm going to start here at this square and I'm going to draw um, over to that very first space, which was a triangle. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say I can go up here. Um, I can't go to the, the uh, Pentagon. I can't go to the circle. Can't go to the square. Can't go to that one. I, oh, I can go up here. So that means I can go one of two places with my starting line and I just draw that line in and my turn's over. And everyone's turn is over after they've drawn one line. Then you will flip over the next card. And then that one's gonna say you can do something. This one in this case says you can draw, um, essentially uh, you can branch out your uh, track. And in this case, having just one line in the game means you can't branch. But the rule for that, um, this breaks the rules essentially, is that your next card over. Um, so let's say I get this guy instead of my branching one. This says I can do one of any of the colors I want, and I can go off of either end. I'm not allowed to branch from the center anymore. So I can still come off of here because I drew, drew my line to this uh, triangle. Now I can go anywhere off of my triangle or anywhere off of that square. I just can't draw over my own lines, and that means subway lines can't cross the same subway line. You can't, it's, it's like the, um, the snake. You're not allowed to come back um, and touch that line that you, the end of your color, and you're not allowed to cross other colors because in subsequent rounds, you were gonna be drawing with your pink line, and then you'll draw in the third round with your blue line, and your last round with your green line if that's the order of the colors that you go in. So you'll play these cards out, um, telling everybody what you know, you're, you've got to draw in next, and what these per the pink ones, these just say, this is a thing you've drawn to, but once you've gotten your fifth 
of the pink cards out in a row. One card played, you draw a line. A next card played, you draw a line. That means it's the end of the round and players are going to score up that particular line. And the thing they look at is how many of these quadrants did I reach with my line this turn, my purple line, times the number of actual stops in that line. So how many of those circles did I reach? And that's going to be added to the amount of times you crossed the river. And that's what you do for all four of those rounds. At the end of the game, you get bonus points for places where lines met up at stations with other lines, meaning my green line met up with my pink line, met up with my blue line, or something like that. So two lines meeting is two points, three lines is th uh, five, and then all four uh, meeting up is nine points. That is the game. It's really fun. It's really lovely. You're going to get in your way with your lines because you're not allowed to cross outside of stations your colors. You're only allowed to meet your colors inside of a station and you're never allowed to draw on the same line. So this game has a lot going for it um, with the flip and write genre and the colored pencils making your own lines with endless possibilities of that flip and write. So that is Next Station London. I'm gonna put this guy right here and then I'm gonna move on uh, talking about the other game in order. This is Fun Facts. Let's find out what Fun Facts is about. Um, this is a party game. It is actually the third in the line of just one, so clover, and then you've got fun facts. So this is really, really cool because, yeah, just like you have with just one <laughs> and so clover, you have dry erase boards and you also have colored pencils. So, or colored pencils, you're gonna have the dry erase boards. So what you're gonna do is everybody is going to take um, one of these guys. These are the things you write your name on. So you put your name on that and you're gonna write on here. Um, all of these are available because yes, again, this is uh, that uh, eight player game and I think it plays incredibly well up to eight. So you're gonna put your name on your chevron and then you're going to pull this deck out and you're going to have uh, eight rounds. And what you're gonna do is you're going to flip over one of these cards. So here's your card, fun facts, yay, I'm excited. And you say, what's the maximum amount you would pay when ordering at a high class restaurant? You're going to say, hmm, what do I want to do? So what you do is you take your board and you take your marker. Let's say I'm the start player. I'm going to take our scorecard. This is essentially what you score up for points in the game. It starts with me. I have my name on one side. So I've got, let's say I've got Kim here, right? So I'm going to have my name. Yes, there we go. And then I want to write, what's the maximum amount you would pay when ordering at a high class restaurant? And I'm going to put down a number. So I'm going to say, and I put it down and then I put my chevron out in the lineup. This is in the center of the board. And then other players in that turn order coming from the start player, they're going to take their board and they're going to write their number and they're going to put it above here, we're going to use this one. We're going to put it above, below, or in between other chevrons placed because these fit together really well. So we'll say that somebody else says, no, 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 no. I think it's this. I think it's this. And what are we doing? We are in order of lowest to highest. So the highest number is going to be essentially at the top. So people might say, I don't know if Kim is going to pay a whole bunch for a, a nice meal at a restaurant. So I'm going to put mine above hers. And then someone says, no, no, I think that I can pay just a little bit more, but not as much as the other person. And they're going to start putting their chevrons in. And then lastly, what you can do as the start player is you can take yours and move it if you think that it needs to be moved. And that's only a start player bonus. After the start player has decided whether they want to move their chevron in the order of all of the different chevrons, you flip everything over and see did we order everything going from essentially high to low? Or if you look at the table going up with the chevrons, it's lowest to highest. And you get a point for every number that is in ascending order. So if something doesn't fit because it was put in the wrong spot, it just gets knocked to the side and it doesn't count against you. It just doesn't count for you. 
Then you're going to write down the number that you got correct on here and then pass that player marker to the next player and they're going to be the start player and they're going to take one of these cards. They're going to look at it. They're going to flip it over and say, how many keys are on your keychain? And that might be really fun with players who know each other really well because you're like, oh, I just saw their keychain. I think they had two. And if you have the same number and you're above or below the same number, it's essentially the same. It's okay. You can be above or below and be essentially the same because um, there's no place to put it beside. You always have to put things in order. So that is fun facts. And you do that eight rounds, count up your score. And then based on the amount of players you have, you're going to take a look at this score sheet on the back. And it's going to say, based on the amount of players you had, look at your score and then figure out how well you did. It is really fun. Okay. So that is again, fun facts. Let's clear this up so that I can get Dorf Romantic out here. All right, let's dive into Dorf Romantic. What is this? And how is it a tile laying game? Let's see here. We've got a handful of stuff to get through before I open this up. So the first thing you're gonna see is every single game, you have a track of how you're going to score. And these are gonna be all the unlockable um, achievements and features that you can add to the base game, which is going to be tracked up here. So I have played 10 games of this so far because this is a game that you play again and again, unlocking new features, new tiles, and so forth. So the first thing players need to do in preparation for this is shuffle up all of the uh, objective tiles and the land tiles in two separate stacks. And they're gonna put them face down. And to begin the game, players reveal three of these objective tiles. They're going to turn it over place it where they want in the middle of their table, and then they're gonna draw one of the tokens uh, that matches from that stack. So that's the yellow prairie kind of pampas uh, field tile, and they're gonna put it right there on that, and then they're gonna do that where they have essentially three of these tiles. And they can play um, adjacent to uh, any kind of terrain with the exception of Railroads and rivers, they're not allowed to meet and they're not allowed to be cut off. And so you've got to be careful about where you place. Let's uh, fl flip this around this way, because now I've essentially got my river coming over here. I've got some opportunity for my red. I would be uh, placing essentially that tile and then I'll be grabbing in here for my uh, blue, wherever my, oh, there's a blue. I'm going to put that on there like that. And so now that we have three objectives, the rest of the game is trying to meet those objectives, placing out these particular tiles. So if I were to grab this tile, I could put it along the side, making a space to essentially meet that of five tiles of connected yellow. That's all I want. Once I've made my five tiles of connected yellow, this goal comes off. And now we're going to draw a new objective tile Oh, look, it's a train station or a train. Oh, but I can't do that. Remember I just told you you can't do that? So I'm going to put, turn it around this way and hope my river connects like this. And then I'm going to grab my token for my railroad. And then I'm going to try to get four railroads and so forth. And you continually build this, this big, 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 sprawling, lovely, idyllic uh, village with fields and with grass and sheep and railroads and rivers, and you will just keep trying to meet those objectives because that's what these goals are. When you look at this, those are the tasks. You add up how many of the five different types of tasks you achieved by meeting that particular requirement, and then you also get to score the largest enclosed area um, that, well, it doesn't have to be the largest. It just has to have a flag in it. And then you count that many number. You want it to be the largest enclosed area. And then you look at your longest train and your longest river, and you're going to count points for that. So you just keep adding up your points. You play again and again, and, uh, you just keep marking off on this beautiful little track. Now I won't show you, um, my track because we have our track right here of what we have. I'll show you a brand new one um, just so that you can see what it looks like. But you will essentially score uh, based on how well you did and you're going to go up and up and up and get more and more check marks based on how well you do. That's your raw score. 
and then you will fit it into these and you'll get all these different things. You'll unlock boxes, you'll get hearts that give you points for um, being uh, uh, matching adjacent spaces and so forth. It's just gonna keep giving you cool, 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 cooler stuff. And then of course you're gonna write down this, the campaign when you started, when you finished, and you're gonna have all these player sheets, which is what I have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got all my sheets here of all the games I've played of Dwarf Romantic. And it's just a tile laying game trying to maximize and complete those tasks. So now I want to talk about what order I would rank these games in and why. So I'd like to start off with my third favorite, which means that I think this one isn't going to win and I found it to be delightful but not as engaging as the other two for a variety of reasons. And I'm going to say that my third favorite is Fun Facts. So Fun Facts to me is a fantastic party game and I really do like that it fits in with the other two games that Repost Games uh, Productions has made. So I do enjoy Just One. I use it so much in my college classroom. Um, I, I love it. I think it's a fantastic game. I also enjoy So Clover. Those are word games. This is more of a party game of knowing the players that you're with. And if you do know your players, it can be really, really fun. And you can kind of play this game all night long. It's for four to eight players, though, and that doesn't suit necessarily the groups of people that I play with. And if you have four, it works, but it's best when you have seven or eight at the table. And so for me, it's not going to get played as much. While I do enjoy the numbering with the ascending numbers and fitting in where you think you um, slide in based on the fun fact, I just don't see it getting played as much and I don't see um, the overall strategy in the way that I uh, have found with these other two games. So for me, Fun Facts gets third. All right, so Fun Facts right here in third place. The next thing I'm going to talk about is my number two. This is the game that I think um, is probably... <sighs> I think it's going to actually win, but it's my second favorite. Dwarf Romantic. I think Dwarf Romantic is a, a really delightful, peaceful, easy game that just, it, it actually is, the more you play it, it gets harder and harder. So it starts off pretty easy and your scores are pretty low because you don't have a lot of the bonus tiles and you also are just trying to go for basic objectives. So the more you unlock and the more you achieve in this game, the more complex it gets and the um, possibilities of what your town will look like and how many tasks you will accomplish along with all the bonuses, that means your score goes up and up and up and you want to essentially get the best score and you want to unlock everything. And with 10 games in, um, we had a game or two that were just rough because of the tile shuffling and because the objective order that they came out in. And it was still fun though. We still had a really good time. Every game takes an hour. It doesn't take 30 to 60 minutes for us and there's only two of us in the game. So um, I think it's more on the hour long side, but if you want an easygoing cooperative tile laying game, this is absolutely great for you. And the campaign feel does change. It does add things. It does, you know, adjust the game. I think this is a perfect kind of Spiel des Jahres game pick. And so for me, I think they're going to pick Dorf Romantic, but my number one in the game that I would probably play um, a lot faster than I would play Fun Facts or Dorf Romantic is Next Station London. I think this, this is my number one. This is my favorite game of the Spiel game nominees. I think this is just really, really cool. It is just, I mean, it's a solo game that you get to play with other people and compete with because you can play it just as one player and you will be flipping over the cards and drawing in your tracks just using one colored pencil for each particular uh, round. I like the way the flip works. I am a big fan of flip and write games. And I think this just works really well. You're trying to figure out where to put all your lines, where you're going to track, where your multipliers are coming in. If you can get all your stations to meet up at Grand Central Station or, or something like there's there's that one in the center that's like the central station and get big, big points. Um, this is fun. It's delightful. It's easy to share and it's easy to play because it's all simultaneous play. 
So while I really appreciate the cooperative nature of both Fun Facts and Dorf Romantic, I do enjoy that personal strategy puzzle figure me out and it's still just light enough to capture young audiences and casual gamers. So next station in London, you get a stack, you get a big old huge flip-ums of, uh, of sheets to play with. So this game with just one box, kind of endlessly replayable. You could play it a ton and, and really barely make a dent in the amount of sheets that they give you in this game. So this is it. I've got my number one, my number two, and my number three for Spiel des Jahres 2023. Thank you so much for joining me in that overview and my ranking of the games. We'll see who wins in just a little bit. All right, folks, that's it for me. Check out my Kenner Spiel uh, overview and review next. It is going to be my next video coming out.